Scott here with ATX Bourbon doing another rye tasting. I feel like I've been doing a lot of, a lot of rye lately, but maybe it's just the weather, time of year, that kind of thing. Um, so I've got my trusty bottle of 2020 Thomas Handy that I picked up last December here. And I'm going to be doing a tasting of four different years of uh, Thomas Handy. So in addition to the 20, I've got the 2019. This one's a little lower proof, 125.7. Oh, the 2020 was 129 proof. Then I've got a 2014, which is 129.2, so back up. And then going all the way back to 2011, and I looked it up, and that one's 128 point, whatever, 128 point something. Doesn't matter that much. So uh, the 11, the 14, the 20, all pretty close in proof, within about a point there. And then that, um, that 2019, kind of a little lower. Um, when I had the 2020 Tom Sandy, I thought it was fantastic. Loved it, so I'm excited to try some of these other years. Uh, I also really enjoyed the 17 and the 18. I thought the 19 was a little bit of an off year for Thomas Handy, but I, I just had a bar pour or two, so um, you'll kind of see how it stacks up in this blind. Uh, I've also heard that some of the older ones are better, but you know we'll we'll find out um, if you know if, if those older B tacks really do kind of stand out compared to the new ones. So this first sample is nice. Um, it's not as rye as I would expect. I don't get like the herbs and the spices as much. Get some of like the darker sweet and like maybe a little bit of oak. Yeah, that's good though. Um, that's really good. Nice finish, uh, nice sweetness to it. Almost reminds me more of a high rye bourbon than a uh, than a rye whiskey right off the bat. Let's take one more sip. Yeah, some sweet like almost like brown sugar notes. That's really nice. That is not what I expected, so I'm going to guess that that's one of the older ones. <laughs> Maybe it tastes a little different than what I'm thinking of the Thomas Handy um, profile, but who knows, it'll probably be the 2020 and I'll just embarrass myself. This one's definitely different on the nose. Um, more spice for sure. That's pretty good too. Um, nice mouthfeel on this one, I really like the mouthfeel. A little bit of like dryness on the finish, but not in a bad way. Um, uh, I like drier wines too, so that's not super surprising. I think that first one really kind of stood out compared to that second one, though. Uh, number three. <laughs> it's a lot of rye whiskey. <laughs> These are getting a little harder to tell apart at this point. Um, this one's good. Uh, Rye notes. A um, little something weird towards the end there. I don't know exactly what that flavor is at the end there. A oh, good spice on the finish, though. Nice, lingering, spicy finish. It's not like overpowering, like really rye spice. There's just this, like, right when you swallow, there's just a slightly kind of off profile note there. Okay, last one. That's nice. It's bright. It's herbaceous. Yeah, good herb, good herbal notes, good sweetness to it. Off the bat, that tastes the most like I expected Thomas Handy Sazerac to taste. Um, and given that I'm drinking the most 2020 any of the years, that's going to be my guess there. <laughs> um, I think it was that, was it the second one or the third one that I thought was a little off? I think it was the third one. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, it's really good. There's just this one little note. It's just not like not my favorite. And when you look at these really rare bottles, you're gonna have to track one down. Like you know, of these four, this would be the one I wouldn't track down compared to the other ones. Hey, that's the 19. That doesn't surprise me. I thought it was a little bit of an off year when I had it. It's still really good whiskey, but it's not like go pay three hundred dollars for a bottle kind of whiskey. Um, Okay, so I have the fourth sample. This is the one I thought was the 2020 just because it's the most similar to what I would expect. Thomas Handy to taste like. On the other hand, if this is one of the older years, like that's cool. Um, they're all still Thomas Handy, right? That's pretty good. Oh, that's the 14. Okay, cool. So the 14, I guess, is a pretty uh, on profile, in my opinion, year of Thomas Handy. Um, I thought that one and the second one were pretty close. They were the most, like, verbal. 
Maybe this is the 20? Nope, that's the 11. Ooh, that was really good. Um, and then that makes that first one the 20. Yeah, it tastes really sweet to me. Maybe it's just compared to these other ones. Um, wow. Well, I didn't learn as much as I hoped from this. It wasn't like clear to me that the older ones were way different. Um, the 2020 hand, Thomas Handy is fantastic. The 2011, also fantastic. The 2014, slightly less fantastic than the 20 and the 11, but still fantastic. And the 2019, very good whiskey, but just not on the same level. Um, what I would expect from Thomas Handy. So, you know, if you are going to go out and track down a bottle, however you would do that, <laughs> the year I would not recommend would be 2019. And, and then uh, while these older ones are, are, are really great, um, I, you know, the newer ones are going to be easier to find. Let's just put it that way. And, and I just don't think the older ones really command the additional difficulty finding them or paying for them or whatever. So as we're learning, this was a ton of fun. Thomas Handy's a great whiskey. 19 was an off year, but back to form of 2020. And uh, looking forward to the 2021 release. Thanks for tuning in, folks.